I found a mod that makes Plants vs. Zombies insanely hard. It's called Plants vs. Zombies Plus, and they've cranked up the game's difficulty by adding more zombies to each level, buffing zombies to an insane degree, nerf the best plants, and whatever this is. But is it that hard? Well, I had to use a lawnmower on the very first level. Pretty sure there's no way we can possibly take this guy down. I'm almost positive we're gonna have to use the lawnmower here. Because even if we take down the bucket head, look at all these guys in behind. This is insane. And we're definitely gonna have to use the lawnmower on the very first level, so that's just awesome. Moving on to 1 2, the first big change of this mod is that sun now gives you 50 per orb, as opposed to the usual 25 sun. And your first thought is probably, well, that'll make things a lot easier, and you'd be wrong, because the level starts with them spawning a zombie on each lane. So I'm forced to sacrifice a lawnmower right as the level starts, leaving me partially defenseless. Luckily, after sacking a mower, I'm able to build up a decent wall before the final wave. The flag zombie has also been changed to a bucket head, which is bad enough, but he's also special in the fact that he moves faster than all other zombies. I watch as this one zombie tears down everything I've built, and I am forced to use my other lawnmower. If they had sent that down one of the other lanes where I'd already used my lawnmower, that would have been an automatic loss. Luckily for level 1-3, I've unlocked the cherry bomb, which gives me a much needed way to take on bucket heads. And that goes well. I still only have the three- oh my god, I started with a cone head! Jesus Christ. This lane is a wash. There's no there's no way we can save this lane at this point. I'm just resigning it to being a lawnmower. Luckily, by placing a last second pea shooter up top, I'm able to save my lane, but I still lose my lawnmower on the second lane. The real problem is just how many zombies they throw at you. I mean, look at this. And that's not even a wave. That's just a normal part of the level. But with some strategic cherry bombs, we're able to get through and unlock walnuts. On to level 1-4, where two coneheads? How are you supposed to kill that? I start placing my sunflowers in front of my plants this time for a couple reasons. Firstly, because sun is buffed so much, you usually get a huge surplus of it. So if your sun producers get eaten, it's not the end of the world. The limiting factor instead becomes your seed recharge time. While pea shooters recharge relatively fast, it can feel like ages when they're sending four conehead zombies down each lane. This is another reason why I started placing the sunflowers in front. Since the seed recharge times are so long, losing even a single pea shooter can wreck your entire defense. Sun Sunflowers, on the other hand, recharge very quickly and can allow your plants a couple extra seconds to shoot. Walnuts also help reduce the difficulty of this level, though their recharge time is even longer than pea shooters. And just the amount of zombies they throw at you, they can usually chew through them pretty quick. A couple zombies managed to get through my second lane, but by placing a well-timed sunflower, I'm able to save my pea shooters, use my cherry bomb on the wave, and make it to walnut bowling. This level is slightly harder than normal, but you know, it's still walnut bowling. So we beat the level and unlock the potato mine. And this is the first plant that's been given a complete buff. Instead of just exploding the plant that steps on it, it now explodes a 3x3 three three square around it. While this sounds super useful, getting zombies to group up together when you also have time to wait for a potato mine doesn't happen very often. 1-6 also introduces pole vaulting zombies, which not only have their signature pole vault, but also move much faster than normal zombies, making them a real pain to deal with. I once again sacrificed two mowers at the very start of the level just to secure my pea shooters. After heavily relying on walnuts for the level, I'm able to progress on. We then unlock snow peas, which are going to prove invaluable for the rest of this run. Just being able to slow down your enemies and have more time to either build defenses or use crowd control is hugely useful. 1-7 is mostly uneventful until the end where graves start popping up, which makes the final wave, well, awesome. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a lot of zombies. After taking them out, we unlock chompers, who I decide to bring to the next level over pea shooters. They've been buffed to give themselves a chomp range of three tiles in front of them, which allows me to easily escape through the next two levels. 110 is one of those auto-scrolling levels, which... Does anybody like these levels? But with that finished, we're headed on to the nighttime levels, and this is where the difficulty really starts to ramp up. We're able to get through the first three levels relatively easily, but all that changes on level two, four. And it's all because of this guy right here. Yes, for some reason, they thought it'd be a good idea to give the screen door zombie a bucket as well. Which you might think, well, can't you just use fume shrooms to shoot through the screen? Yeah, not anymore. And we don't have access to magnet shrooms for a long time, so our options here 
here are extremely limited. And how am I going to deal with this? Well, firstly, by asking you to subscribe to the channel. I make a ton of plant-based content on this channel, and if this video gets an influx of subscribers, I'll make a video on the even harder version of PBZ called Brutal Mode. Preparing for 2-4, I decide to take a page out of my dad's book and leave my son behind, as having a free plant means nothing when the enemy has a screen door and a bucket. I start the level up, and our infamous metal-headed friend is the first one to approach, and of course, he's right where I placed my sunflower. So I decided to just sacrifice three lawnmowers so that I can prioritize sun production, as during the nighttime levels, you don't have nearly the same surplus that you do during the day. In my attempts to build up though, they send three cone heads down one lane and a screen door bucket head down the other. Since I have limited access to insta kills, I decide to potato mine one and hope that my chomper and fume shroom can take the other one out. Hopefully that'll work in time. I do not know if that is true. Please chomper, please, 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 please. I need you alive so bad. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. No, no, my fume shroom. Can't even get sunflowers up, man. Oh God, oh, I'm gonna lose. I can explain. Oh God, this is bad. Oh, 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 in the nick of time. Oh my God, I needed this so bad. I don't know what to do. Uh, Snoopy, uh, cherry bomb. Okay, now I see why you guys want me to bring the walnuts. Just gotta go for the potato mine play. Actually, I don't know if the potato mine play is gonna play off. Oh, that would be really bad. Ooh, that would be so bad. Oh no, come on. Oh, please. Oh my God, I thought I was a dancing zombie. I was about to... I died on level 2-4. I realize here that current strategies I've been using were not gonna work. So I load up the level again, this time more focused on chompers and fume shrooms. Chompers are great in general, as really there's no way to take out the screen doors with damage, so you have to rely on their insta-kill chomp. Fume shrooms have also been buffed, and now they hit an entire row at once, all the way from the back. Combined with the fact that their attack pierces, this makes them one of the strongest plants in the game. I'm making progress with this new strat, but every time I have a lane going, they either send a screen door or a pole vault to just completely tear through what I have. I'm right before the wave when they send two pole vaults and two screen doors at me. Luckily, by using some cleverly placed chompers in the nick of time, I'm able to make it through. And then they immediately send this, which I have no way of dealing with, and I quickly lose. For my fourth attempt of level 2-4, I decide to bring puff shrooms again, mostly because they can slow down pole vault zombies by making them use their jump early. And this time, I get a much easier opening spawn with no screen door in sight. This lets me get way more sun shrooms down. I use this opportunity to secure my advantage by placing some snow peas as well. I still have to use a lawnmower at the start, but I'm able to make it to the wave by using chompers as budget cherry bombs. I know they both cost the same, but chompers reload way quicker, which allows you to place them whenever you see a screen door. And with that, I secure the victory. Then after a finger busting 2-5, we unlock the hypno shroom and move on to 2-6. And let me tell you, the next two levels are far and away some of the hardest levels in the entire game because these are the levels that they add football zombies. Now you might be thinking, how much harder can a football zombie be than a bucket head screen door? <laughs> so much. Oh, nice. Wait, what? It didn't kill either of them. Look how many times this chopper's chopping him. What is this? Come on! Why would you bring choppers? Why would you even bring them? Yes, for this mod, some diabolical, twisted human decided to buff the ever-living out of football zombies. Firstly, they're resistant to any insta-kills. In order to kill one, you have to use two, sometimes even three, exploding plants. Choppers are an obvious solution to this, since they kill everything in one hit, right? Right? <laughs> Do they ever kill that thing? Been here for 10 years. Will they ever? I don't think they will. I'm not sure they will. It's gonna go through an entire walnut. Oh my god. It actually went through an entire walnut. Holy crap. That took so long. With two chompers wailing on this football zombie, he is able to chew through an entire walnut by himself. And even still, they barely kill him. Well, you might be thinking, just use Hypno Shroom. Then you have the strong zombie on your side. You'd think, right? Nope. The second they come to your side, they become weaker than my ethics when I see how many views 100 Days videos gets. And don't get me started on him. Oh, we couldn't. It's okay. It's okay. Newspaper zombie can't be that bad. So he's that bad? Um... So he is, he's way worse than I could have ever imagined in a million years. Uh, <laughs> that was insane. Attempting 2-6 and 2-7 is grueling, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
let's just start with two six. Alone into the level, and honestly, things don't look too bad. Starts off with just a couple of normal and conehead zombies, which I can use puff shrooms to hold off while I build up sun. However, this spud blows up this newspaper zombie's newspaper, who then goes on to annihilate my entire row. I make my way all the way to the final wave, but the football zombies have just eviscerated any sort of defense I had. As you need hypno shrooms for every single one. I try again, but this time I do even worse as I get some unlucky newspaper spawns and end up losing the run. On my third attempt, I lose all of my lawnmowers in favor of getting down some sun shrooms and get a lot less football zombie spawns. I also start rapidly placing spud mines whenever they're available since so many enemies take two of them to take them out. I make it to the last wave and thankfully they send all the football zombies down the row I had already pre-placed a hypno shroom, leading to a secure victory. But 2-6 was just a warm-up lap for the evil that awaits in 2-7 as not only do we have football zombies but our old friend's screen doors are back as well. This is where our limiting number of seat slots really starts to hinder us. You have to bring sun shroom, puff shroom for normal and conehead zombies, hypno shroom for football zombies, chompers for screen doors, and spud mines for the early game. This only leaves you with two real slots to maneuver with. Walnuts, snow pea, fume shroom, cherry bomb, you want to have them all, which is why I make the brilliant decision to bring scaredy shroom. My thought process is that scaredy shroom is so cheap and that'll allow me to efficiently deal with all the coneheads and normal zombies. The problem with this though is, uh, like all of this. Doesn't matter how many shots you shoot when there are three impenetrable fortresses on each lane. This leads to a football zombie running down my lane and me losing the level. I try again, but this time I bring cherry bombs instead of scaredy shrooms. This allows me to actually set up a pretty decent defense of two rows of choppers behind walnuts. But right as I'm feeling secure, one football zombie is able to tear through my entire defense and one misplaced walnut cost me the round. I try a couple more times with similar strategies, but if you get too many football zombie spawns before the first wave, you're basically boned. After about an hour of attempts, I decide to go with a layout focusing almost entirely on insta-kills with cherry bombs, spuds, walnuts, and hypno shrooms. The main reason things go so well though is that I have two lanes go untouched, so I can build up huge amounts of sun shrooms on them. Having tons of sun on top of the cherry bombs means that I only really need to focus on the football zombies. I use walnuts in front of hypnos to give me time to recharge them. Towards the end of the level, basically my entire defense is gone, but with a couple well-placed cherry bombs, I am finally able to make it through this hellscape. The next couple night levels have a certain someone mysteriously absent, so they are much easier. The dancing zombies can be pretty easily taken out with a cherry bomb or a chomp. This leads to a pretty easy 2-8, and also the unlock of doom shrooms, whose instigal power makes 2 9 even easier. Then, after a quick boring auto-scrolling level, we've made it on to the pool levels. You get so much more sun during the day, I forgot. Oh my god, this is so beautiful. Oh my god, I miss this so much. Having more sun during the day makes these levels a lot easier, as you don't need to build up nearly as many sun producers before building up your defense. Also, being able to have snow peas again is huge, as their slowing effect gives you way more time to think. This first level only has cone heads, making it pretty easy to clear. Luckily, these early levels are usually pretty easy, so we don't have to do much. Oh, these guys are back. Awesome. With no hypno shrooms. Oh, great. And they brought back the newspaper zombies. Well, you got to bring these guys. Got to bring walnut. Those are the essentials. Got to bring snow pea. Got to bring chomper. Got to bring cherry bomb. Now, the last three are kind of a toss up. Do you bring squash, potato, or repeater? I feel like you don't bring squash and potato. And I feel like squash is better than potato. Even though it's not strictly better, like, just for the uses that I end up using it for. And while this level looks like another 2-7, it's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Mainly because we unlocked the squash last level, which might be the best plant in this entire mod. It only costs 50 sun, it recharges much faster than most insta-kills like cherry bombs, and it can take out multiple zombies in a lane. Squash becomes an absolute necessity for me in every level. It also means that for just 200 sun, I can use one plus a cherry bomb to take out any zombie. The other Another huge part of our success in this level is snow pea plus walnut. Having the sun to be able to slow down how quickly a football can shoot through a walnut gives you time for choppers to whittle it down and then you can just place a squash to finish it off. And since there are no screen door zombies on this level, the only thing resistant to freeze is the occasional newspaper zombie. Also I find that the AI doesn't really like to send zombies down your pool lanes at first, allowing you to place a ton of sunflowers there. All this combined allows me to get through level 3-2 on my first attempt, which honestly was a huge shock to me. 3-3 three three is also pretty Pretty easy as it serves to introduce snorkel zombies who can easily be taken out with a chomper. The difficulty once again gets upped on 3-4 though as newspaper, buckethead, snorkel, and pole vault all come back. I also make a harrowing discovery right at the beginning of the level. Oh god! What? Wait, what? The squash didn't kill him? Oh. 
Well, that's not good. I think the hardest part of levels like this is remembering what kills each zombie. Like, in order to kill a pole vault, you need not only a chomper, but also something in front of that chomper. And to kill a snorkel, you can use a squash or a chomper, but to kill a newspaper, you can only use a chomper. This leads to a pretty stupid moment where I cherry bomb the newspaper zombie, only for him to go on and kill me. However, I try again and then just place an influx of chompers, which allows me to take out any newspaper or buckethead zombies. Having this freedom to not worry about them during the waves lets me slowly build up pea shooters in the back, leading to an easy easy victory. Next up is 3-5, which is the tiny zombies level, which is mostly uneventful. They send a butt ton of football zombies, but by procrastinating them with walnuts, you can save up double cherry bombs to take out most of them. Winning gives us the chili pepper, and we head into 3-6. 3-6 introduces zombonies, which thankfully haven't been given any health buffs, so you can just use a squash to kill them. I did discover a slightly niche strat with them, though, if you have 50 extra sun. Whenever a zomboni comes down your row, you basically have to chili pepper it. But if you have 50 extra sun to spend on a squash, you can let them set up ice down a whole row. Then the bobsled zombies will start coming out in droves. If you let a couple bomb sled teams build up, you can then pepper the entire row and oftentimes the zombies will drop some sun for you to pick up, giving you an extra sun boost for only an extra 50 sun. The main problem with this level is just the amount of zombonies they throw at you. And since they don't eat plants, you can't solve them out with walnuts to wait on the long recharge time of plants like the pepper or the cherry bomb. Most of this level just becomes trying to stall as best you can for your insta kills. But I'm able to set up repeaters to take on all the other zombies and clear the level. Here, I decided to do the slot machine minigame, as the extra money will allow me to buy the Gatling P. But I don't bring it for the next level. Instead, I go for the genius spike weed and chomper build, which is just next level brilliant. The spike weed weakens the zombies, which does nothing, as there are choppers to insta kill them at the end anyway. Brilliant thinking, Shawnee. This, unsurprisingly, makes this level a real struggle, losing nearly all of my lawnmowers. I think I got pretty lucky spawns, though, as I'm somehow able to clutch out a victory at the very last second. We move on to 3-8 where I decide to try out a Gatling P plus Torchwood build. And the Torchwood has actually been completely changed for this mod. Now, instead of turning peas into fire when they go through, they instead turn peas into ice shots. I'm not sure what the intent of this change was, but it comes off more like a nerf than a buff. As although the ice shot is nice, the raw damage of the fire shot is severely missed. However, Gatling Ps now shoot six shots instead of four, making it kind of even out. This level also introduces one of my least favorite enemies in the entire mod, the Dolphin. <laughs> rider zombies. These things have had their speed cranked, and they can easily tear through all of your plants. And you might be thinking, well, just put down some lily pads to make them lose their dolphin, and then you can easily take them out. You'd think, right? But they send so many of these riders at you at once that it's impossible for your lily pads to even recharge in time to deal with them all. This leads to my land lanes being absolutely fine, but having a pretty rough time in the water. By the end of the level, I basically have nothing in either lane going into the final wave. Okay, we need more lily pads, but then we're fine. Oh, Oh no, this row's done. My Gatling P! What row is looking the worst? All of them. Okay, good assessment, Sean. Uh, you need to go there. Um, you know, I, I didn't think I'd get this far. We need the cherry bomb. We need the cherry bomb bad. Oh crap. No, 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 Come on, cherry bomb, cherry bomb! No, no, no! Oh my god! Oh wait, I didn't even think about this row though! Oh my god! With that level barely finished, it's time to head into 3-9, the final pool level. This level, I decided to try out the 3-peter, which proves much stronger. It's way easier to just protect two lanes and then throw some torchwoods on the other, rather than have to afford repeaters and constantly replace them on every lane. You also have so much sun that just waiting for a couple 3-peters ends up being much more efficient than waiting for a million repeaters. The tall nuts I just got also help out a ton, as they've been buffed to do the squash attack after they've been fully eaten, letting you stack up a bunch of zombies and then one-hit kill them. Also, this is where the amount of graves that they spawn really starts to get to you. I mean, look at this. I basically can't plant on like half of my columns. However, with good pepper placement, we can easily make it through. One boring auto scroller later, and we're on to the fog levels. And seeing as the nighttime levels were by far the hardest part of the game, it can only be expected that the fog levels will be even harder, right? A symphony of pain and suffering. Roots of my plants constantly being undone by the undead only to leave my house completely unprotected, right? Well, actually, no. The fog levels are actually really easy. Like, mind-numbingly easy. Like, so easy that I start to have a mental breakdown that I must have installed the mod wrong. Okay, this is crazy. Just a couple bucket heads? Am I even doing this right? Like... 
Hold on, did I just load into the wrong version or something? It just seems like the difficulty fell off the cliff. Like they had like screen door bucket heads. And now it's just like sprinkling a couple of digger zombies. You know what I mean? How do you make a new one? Click let's go. Okay, so it's definitely right. I guess they just did not go as hard for the end of this mod. Because in the base game, it's just one. I guess I just had a lot of character development, guys. I think just the buff to fume shrooms, doom shrooms being so strong, and the lack of football zombies just makes the entire thing a cakewalk. Which honestly is a relief for me because I hate the fog levels. And after just a hop, skip, and a jump, we're on to the roof. And with how easy the fog levels were, I was honestly expecting the same from the roof. Maybe the mod creators just got bored by this point and started phoning it in. I soon learned this was not the case. In fact, my entire playthrough up until this time was around six hours. Beating just the roof levels took me another six hours. More time than the entire rest of the mod. And it comes out of nowhere. The first three levels are pretty much a cakewalk that I can solo with just catapults and chompers. Colonel Pulse even got a buff that makes their butter throw stronger as it now completely freezes enemies. But none of this could have prepared me for the horror that lie waiting in level 5-4. As once again, the evil of this world has returned. I load into the first level, and as I'm deciding what I need to bring, I realize that I need so many insta guild plants that I don't even have the space for anything else that could actually attack. You need Hypno Shroom to deal with the football zombies, which means you have to bring Coffee Bean. You have to bring Pumpkins as they help you deal with ladder zombies, and Magnets as you need to take out the Pogos. I'm forced to take just Chopper to deal with everything else and hope for the best. And the game retaliates by immediately sending a football zombie down my lane, which was just real nice. The chompers are actually taking on everyone pretty well, and the pumpkins are allowing me to pre-place hypnos for the football zombies. That is, until after the first wave when they start sending football zombies down every lane at once. At one point, there are three football zombies in a single lane, which obviously becomes too much and I die. I try bringing repeaters the next time, and that goes horribly. I even try bringing starfruit, which goes even worse. What are you doing, starfruit? Okay, starfruit suck. Never mind. After all that, I go back to the first setup, which I had the most success with, except this time swapping out magnets for doom shrooms and tall nuts for pumpkins. And we start off in a pretty good spot, despite getting a ton of football zombies. We're able to stall them using tall nuts, which then use their squash attack to do huge damage that can allow you to either place another insta kill or have them be so weakened by that point from a chomper that they. Die. But things start to ramp up once they start sending multiple footballs down the same lane. Okay, Hypno's gonna get that. Maybe. I'd- oh my god. This is not good. Holy crap, this is so bad. And this row is like basically not def- like, has no defense. I hate the football zombies so much, man. Okay, well they died. Okay, we need coffee bean. We need coffee bean bad, please. Okay, that did a good job, kind of. This is quite bad, actually. Okay, I have a plan. Okay, that kind of was surprisingly effective. We need to place a tall nut here, I guess? Okay, Doom Shroom is back up. Just kill all these guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. With that finished, we take a much needed break with an auto scrolling level before making our way onto 5 6. On this level, I realized that Fume Shrooms actually work on the entire roof for some reason, so I'm able to easily beat this by just spamming them. After that, we're on to 5-7, which despite not looking too intimidating, is the second hardest level in the entire game. This level doesn't even really feature anything particularly broken. No footballs, no newspapers, no screen doors, not even bucket heads. All it is is ladders, catapults, and some cone heads. And yet, hours were spent here just begging to try and get past. I load into this level with the same strategy I used for 5-6, since it works so well there. <laughs> oh, how naive I was then. How truly foolish. To be fair, I trained a brute force without the umbrella leaf. This time, things actually go pretty well until an ill-timely placed doom shroom has a zombie chew through it before I can wake it up with the coffee bean. This quickly snowballs into me losing two rows and then having no way to recover from there. The strategy has been working almost perfectly, so I keep making tiny adjustments to try and pull it off, but I keep dying at the same spot. First, I try replacing magnet shrooms with tall nuts, since magnet shrooms are pretty bad. 
Then I try bringing twin sunflowers so they don't have to protect nearly as many squares, meaning I can place more fume shrooms. However, this means I have to leave squash, and you never leave squash. Do not do it. You need squash. The problem that I keep running into is that no matter the defense that I make, ladder zombies can just place their ladder down and walk over the whole thing. This leads to two to three plants dying while I wait for my insta-kills to get ready again. Then I have no time to wait for them all to recharge. And no matter what I tried, I couldn't stop the ladders. Not magnets, not decoy plants, nothing. So I devised a strategy that wouldn't care how many ladders they sent up. The plan would revolve around the upgrade to fume shrooms, gloom shrooms. The great thing about these plants is that they shoot in all eight directions. Meaning that even if a zombie ladders over one, it can still hit it from behind. And by placing pumpkins around those gloom shrooms, we would give them time to kill any zombie that made it over. Their shots also pierce, so it didn't really matter how many zombies made it across. The only thing we'd have to worry about is the catapult zombies, as them just taking out a single gloom shroom would be catastrophic. There was one major problem with this strategy though. It had no room for insta-kills. You only have eight seed slots, and we had to bring sunflower, pot, pumpkin, coffee beans, fume, and gloom shrooms, and umbrella leaf. This meant we only had enough room for one more plant, so we had to sign between squash and doom shroom, both invaluable picks. And despite how much I knew we had to bring squash, I just knew we needed Doom Shroom more. So with a risky strategy, I decided to head into the level. Okay, now this is actually kind of a good strat. Hold on. Just place as many Gloom Shrooms as you can. So you really don't need that many sunflowers. And this lane is super protected, so we're good. And then go go the hell over. I don't, ask me if I give a shit. Replant a Doom there. Then Coffee Bean that. Okay, thank you. I think we're kind of good. Kind of chilling for a bit. Um, okay. Let's do this. Ooh, let's do that. Let's do this. And then let's do this. And then that. No, 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 no. Come on. Thank God. Okay. That was really close. It almost just got bungeed at the last second. <gasps> Woo! All right. And with that, I think we have finally, finally, finally been in this level. And we have Sleep Range at Doom Shroom here for the wave coming up. Oh, we're done. This is easy. Easy, boys. Just give him a second. Yeah! Oh my god, this Doom is about to pop off. Just f all of these guys. Holy sh Oh my god, we're so close. Please! Oh my god. Holy sh Oh, I forgot about the gargantuars. Oh my god, you got the whole squad laughing. Yes, 5-8 introduces the toughest enemy in the game, gargantuars. And the main change they made to this guy is just the pure amount of them that get thrown at you. I decided to try my same gloom shroom strategy again for this level, as I figure their multi-hitting piercing attack would be great for dealing with these little guys that they throw, and then I could just cover the rest with insta-kills. And honestly, it's all going pretty well, and I'm holding them off until... Boom, dead. Okay, now, now he's going to kill all of my good plants. Uh, <laughs> now, oh, oh, and there's more of them. <laughs> oh, and there goes all my best plants. Okay, um, so slight issue that we're experiencing right now. It's just a slight minor one that I'm sort of <laughs> realizing that we're in. Um, that is everything that I hold dear to myself. And then they're gonna kill that, too. Okay. So we can do this. Blow up everything, kind of. And then... That kills that. That's dead. Then get that. No, no, no! Squash! Nice. Squash kills. Okay. Uh, squash? And then what? Just doom, and then... Call it a day, baby! Okay. Nice. Maybe glooms were not the right choice for these. <laughs> um, okay, 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 okay. Please don't kill that. Okay, killed my best plant. Okay. Um, okay, well, this is looking like a wash. Oh, but then there's these guys who I hadn't even considered. Um, put a sunflower there. And then th those guys will just do that. And then we could do this and that and this and that. And that'll kill that, somehow. And then those guys, that's just like a whole thing. They'll, they'll do their own thing. Oh my god, they spawned them all in the same row! Yes! Yes! Kill them! Yes! Nice! Nice! Whew! Okay. Can we just make it to the wave? Can we just make it to the wave, please? And then we can just... 
<laughs> Doom twice and call tonight? Please, we're so close. Sun, need sun. Just a little bit more sun. Okay, all right. Well, that didn't go very well. I run him back again, and this time I bring Colonel Pulse, which, like I said before, have been buffed. But I don't think I realize truly how much that buff helped them until now. Their freeze just lasts for so long, to the point that usually two Colonel Pulse are enough to handle an entire row, bar the Gargantuars. I have a bit of unfortunate luck as I place a couple Doom Shrooms, only to see them completely stomped before I can wake them up. But besides that, I make it to the final wave with my insta kills and beat 5-8. Finally, I think we're gonna get through this level. Uh-oh. Wake up. Boom. Okay. This guy needs one of these. Alright, and then we just have two gargantuars to worry about. That is so extremely fine. That guy's dead, and then this guy's dead. Okay. Oh my god, Colonel Pulse came through! Holy crap, Colonel Pulse came through. Thank you, Colonel Pulse. Thank you for everything. And last up, why level 5-9. The last real level in the game. We've overcome countless obstacles, learned the patterns of every zombie, and unlocked every plant in the game. So surely, all this experience properly equipped us to take on this level, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, f*** you, man. Look, we were so close. Leave me alone, man. I have two f plants. <laughs> There's just so many things to click on, man. No. No, it did not. They throw literally everything they have at you for this level. Buckets, catapults, bungee, ladder, jack of the box, gargantuars. Everything you could think of is here. This was far and away the hardest level of the entire mod. And it took me the most attempts to complete. You see, in the last level, you could kind of just focus on the gargantuars, as the next Shraga zombie was just a conehead. Here, ladder zombies move quick, insta-kills don't work on jack in the box, bucket heads have high health, and bungees means that all of your plants must be umbrella protected. All of these things are pretty easy though, and they might only put a slight dent in your defense, but that slight defense erodes into a gaping hole when they send a 10 foot man down it. For my first attempt at this level, I decided to go for a build focused around the raw power from our newly acquired melon pulse. But right when I'm able to get one down, another row has their melon eaten, so I gotta clear that row until I can afford another melon there. And by the time I get that one back, they're sending three gargantuars down every lane. This leads to an inevitable demise. So I try again, this time with the slowing effects of the Colonel Pulse again. It worked great last level, so why not try again? I also make sure to place them in the back this time so that when the Gargantuars throw their little guy, the Colonel Pulse can still hit them, while they choose through unimportant plants like umbrellas and sunflowers. And this strategy actually is going pretty well until I manage to make it to the second wave and... Yeah, alright. This is what we're gonna do. <gasps> no! Oh, no, my Doom Shroom! Oh no, that was so bad! Oh no! Oh, oh, this is a restart. If you're wondering why I don't try and rebuild my defenses here, it's because rebuilding on the roof is impossible. As the recharge time on the garden pot is so long, so you'll have no hope of being able to rebuild from there. So I try again with a similar build, and once again, things go well, until the second wave when this stupid jack in the box that I couldn't even see chunks out my kernel pulse, leading to a loss. If you even lose focus for a second, your entire defense is gone. Okay, well, let's combine the strategies and bring kernel pulse and melon pulse. This gets me further, but... Oh, this is so bad. Oh, this is so, so bad. This this guy's gonna... Oh, no! No! Oh, that is so bad. Holy crap, he just blew up, like, everything that I... Oh, no! No, no! Well, let's try Fume Shrooms, then. No! Magnet Shrooms? No! Gloom Shrooms? No! Fumes and kernels? No! Walnut bowling? That's gotta be the secret, right? But now's the time when I come in with my sexy feminine post-commentary voice and say, but we didn't let that get us down. I play this music, probably latch onto some inanimate object to make the poster child of this run, and then tell you about my new strategy, right? That's what you're expecting, right? Well, you'd be dead wrong, my friend, because there is no strategy strong enough to get through this. No matter what you try, you will not succeed. The zombies will always have the numbers. You cannot outsmart them. It's 
impossible. Your only hope is to keep resetting until you get a layout without too many gargantuars. Over and over and over and over again resetting. Planting seedlings just to watch them die again like the disgusting human being you are. You are truly pitiful on level 5-9. But sometimes the only path to the top is the road covered in sin. So I sat there boiling in filth. And after attempt, after attempt, after attempt, I was finally able to achieve it. I I'm faltering. Goodbye, thank you. Handled. Squash. Yes! It's happening! Finally! Please! And cherry bomb. Holy crap -aroni. I think this is good. I can't really tell what's going on. Um, melon here. Freaking kill that thing. Please, just a couple more seconds. Okay. Then we just need to uproot that. Squash. Okay. Cherry bomb. Dead. <laughs> oh, this needs a pepper right now. This needs a pepper desperately. Oh, come on. We need a pepper. We need to pepper this right now. Oh! Holy freaking crap, that was so close. Okay. Wait, this is the final wave. We still have our sweepers. Yes. Right. That means we win no matter what. Oh, let it all burn down. Let it burn. I think it's over. Cherry bomb here. Holy crap. I might not even use the roof cleaners. I'm so good. Okay, we will have to use at least one uh, roof cleaner. That's okay. That's, that's, that's to be expected. Yes. Finally. Yes. It's so over. Oh my god. Holy crap. That took so long. After sacrificing every single plant we'd placed on the roof, we were able to make it through the hell that was level 5-9. And with that, all we have left is the boss battle with Dr. Zomboss, who proves to be pretty easy as long as we time our peppers and ice shrooms correctly. So after just one loss, we managed to make it through and finish Plants vs. Zombies. I'm beyond happy. I couldn't be more proud. And we made it through without a single reference to- Wait, no, please, don't play that video! The sunflower from Plants vs. Zombies is hot! I cannot explain!